it's where the Civil War started. Mm -hmm. Robert E. Lee was in the Mills Hotel when he decided to fire on Fort Sumter. That's where this is. If you look at what happened after, America was exhausted, 620,000 dead. Then we went through a civil rights era, a culmination of events from, from two presidents being killed, Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. being killed, and we ended up in riots all over our country, and we were exhausted. This time around, with all of the headlines about the police brutality with Trayvon Martin, with all of this tension in the sky, all of these racial dynamics, and then Charleston, and rather than riots, rather than uh, war, people said, let's pull ourselves together. Glenn, keep in mind that um, when Martin Luther King Jr. marched, when we had a civil rights movement, it was because we wanted barriers removed. It was about segregation. There were governmental barriers. It was about institutional racism. Now, I know a lot of people are trying to make this about institutional racism and act like it's a continuum of events. It is not. If you remember, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, you cannot legislate morality, but you can regulate behavior. We needed the barriers of government removed so man could live free. But bigotry, when you talk about racial bigotry that's in the heart, this is not something law can do. This is something heart has to do. Mm -hmm. This is something man has to do. That's why and that's why is... this is so important. Right. When, did, when you went down there, did you notice that one thing about Charleston that very few people know is they don't blow their horn. Did you notice that? It's in their culture. They never blow their horns. And mm -hmm. when people come there and they may blow, tap a horn, because they have a lot of visitors, so much of Politan, so wonderful. I know so much about it because 90% of my family lives in South right. Carolina. It's but such a great They town. never, isn't it fabulous? But they don't blow their horn. And so if a tourist is there and they tap their horn, everyone just gently kind of looks at them to let them know it's not in our culture. And then you notice it's not in their culture at all. So, so let me ask you, I had an atheist call me on the radio today and say, um, there's no, he's like, I'm an atheist. But there is no doubt in my mind it is the it's the God culture, right. the Christian culture yeah. there right. that is making it this so way. Tragic. Do you think that's right? It's so tragic. It's it's called the holy city because it has more churches in that one little area, that one little city than all of any place across the country. Uh, it's so, the, the, the South Carolinians take their Bible very seriously. In fact, I think it's something where near 40% of them still go to church every Sunday morning in comparison to, let's say, a, a state of, in the Northeast where you might have 15% get up right. and go to church every morning. So I think it's, it's significant because when you think about what the founders wanted, they cannot, they knew that without a religious framework, we won't be able to live free. And we are not going to be able to move to that place to where we get the ideals uh, in place without traditional norms. So we have people um, that are trying desperately to drag us back to 1965. Oh. I mean, they're trying to make us feel like it's 1965. Right. We're not those people. Right. That, that, that young man, that young killer, went in there to start a race war. Yeah. We've seen for the last year and a half now this tension escalating. We see a police sh shooting black men. We see black men shooting police. It's going on and on. And he wanted that war to start. And what happened? The people said no. The family said no. They said we're going to love. We're going to we're going to forgive. This is this is this is just a, a, a special place. And so for those that want to uh, get this tension going again, they're now in the minority. You know, when you think about uh, some of that expression, it's already coming up. It's not just changing to the to the gun debate. Now we have to be on the flag debate. The the, the South Carolinians will have their discussion about their flag, but right now they have to get through funerals. Yeah. And it's not for the rest of the nation to tell them, get healed up and get this done right now. Most people in the country didn't even know they still had the flag there, uh, the Confederate flag. So there are some business they need to do themselves. But the folks that are now trying to instigate tension, they're on the margins. And I think Americans need to keep the pressure on that we're going to love our way through this. Uh, I think that it's, um, I think um, the Jewish people have it right with, with uh, Shiva, mm. uh, where you sit for seven days with mourning and you're not allowed mm -hmm. to say anything, mm -hmm. you know, unless mm -hmm. spoken to. Mm -hmm. And everybody is saying, we need gun control, we mm -hmm. need the flag gone, we need all this. They're still in... Or guns in church, someone even said. Yeah. I know, but, but the, and I, we can't d be dismiss that we do have freedom of press and expression and with the sure. social media, you're, there's pressure even to say feels, something. So, because, but that's why it feels <laughs> wrong, I think, at this yeah, point. Yeah, but, but what are you going to do? I mean, I'm, I'm in the same position. I'm a nationally syndicated columnist. I, I, I write books. I'm a media talking ahead. So you have to pull your ideas together. What I've been telling my team and one of the things that I've been teaching myself through uh, my, my Christian worldview is, is 
to stop being reactionary. Take a deep breath. You'll be able to pull your thoughts together and then get out there because if you answer too quickly, sometimes the answer is harsh. And I think that uh, those of us on the right have been just as guilty uh, as on the left to stir up the tension. Uh, King Solomon told us that a soft answer turns away wrath. And frankly, on some of these incidents, when you have a community of people that poll year after year after year that they do not feel safe in their person and property on a local level, then maybe the nation should hear them. Maybe we shouldn't keep saying, oh, that's just you. Oh, you should get over it. Right. There's a problem in black communities if yes. black people keep saying that on the local level we don't feel safe in our personal property. We'll never reduce the size and scope of government well, if I, we don't get that right. I, um, I, I think, A, that was one of the ideas behind Martin Luther King is don't dismiss the other person's complaint. You have to meet them That's where right. they are. That's so right. you, right. we have to understand that That's that right. is happening. But this weekend I heard with the gun debate, I heard families, black families in Chicago and in inner cities going, no, no, no. It's time now to arm. Yes, it's there are. time now. I mean, it's going right. the other direction. Yeah, that's right. That's you know, right. while the, the left is pushing for gun control, right. it's actually the inner city. The, right, the, right. the African American is the one right. saying, no, no, no. And I'm glad that they're getting to the place where they embrace our constitutional right to bear yes. arms, the Second Amendment, because if you think about why there's so much murder in the black communities, especially our at-risk communities where we have, um, you know, concentrated poverty through welfare policy, the, the blacks only 16 percent even own an arm. So when you have an unarmed people, then yeah. those that are armed, those uh, the gangsters, will come and, and wreak havoc over your community. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if, we're, if, if they begin to express themselves by saying perhaps it is time for us to arm. Uh, I'm, I hope that it takes a little bit of time, though, uh, because you don't want aggressive, you, and, yes. and we don't want a race war. We don't want vigilantes. No, we yeah. do not want vigilantes. Okay, so um, this week, maybe next week, there are three decisions that are coming from the Supreme Court yeah. uh, that are pretty dicey. Yeah. I mean, really pretty dicey. Yeah. The biggest of which is gay marriage. Yeah. Um, I personally think the gay marriage uh, debate has been lost and is over long ago, decades ago. Um, just, they just, the churches just didn't make a good case. And I think the media and the culture made a great case for, you know, love is my business. Now the argument to me that the churches better mount is, um, okay, that's fine, but right of conscience. I have a right of conscience, just like if I go to your bakery and you happen to be gay and I'm the Westboro Baptist Church, you're not going to want to make a happy anniversary Westboro Baptist Church. That gets really complicated, though, because when we think about it for, for a cake or a photographer, we have to then extend it to uh, the wedding chapels that are privately owned and or the hotels that are privately owned that have bridal suites. I'm not well, so they're sure. Well, already closing, they're already closing down. There was another... A bridal chapel kind of in. Well, I know place. they're closing, but we have to now take a take a breath as a country and say, is that really the right answer? As opposed to opening and reopening the debate about traditional marriage, because some of the questions that were not asked is which parent shouldn't be there, which which child doesn't need a mom and a dad. Another question that we haven't asked ourselves as a country, because it's moved so quickly, uh, as you said, popular culture has moved this d discussion along so quickly that American people haven't had a chance to say, but we need to protect the interest of religion and we need to protect the interests of children. And so when you think about um, rewriting every law in the country, the challenge that we have uh, in a free country is, and especially America, is we are not gender neutral. We are very gender specific. So we're talking about every single law from birth certificates to death certificates. We're talking about rewriting every law in Washington, D.C., in every state, because all of them are gender specific. Our, the, school, the, the laws that govern our schools are gender specific. The laws that govern our foster system are gender specific. The laws that are our orphanages. This is not just about two people wanted to uh, express themselves as married, as if we can change. This is a massive cultural change. This is a change. massive cultural change. So right. w I'm not sure that the court is not going to take that into consideration. It's not a political arm. Uh, it, it is, so, it is but to look they, at the Constitution and say, is this going to help or hurt society? How do we have those discussions without cries of bigot, hate monger, yeah. all of this garbage? I don't know. We can't. We're talking conflicting worldviews. 
from the beginning of time, you have biblical worldview on one side that believes in freedom and personal responsibility. You have a secular worldview on the other that believes in statism, that believes that the government is the final authority, that believes that it's the ultimate agent of, of redemption. These two cannot coexist. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, we, we're getting to the place that, who knows, we um, might end up either in a separated society to where the church now has to go under, underground or the general population says maybe um, sexual behaviors really are adult behaviors and they should be private. Uh, maybe uh, we should consider that if a person wants to train their children in the ways of the scripture, that that should not be illegal in America. Uh, I just don't know that we've asked all the questions. I don't know that we've had full debate. If they rush this to the court, and um, you're right, it's going to come down over the next couple of weeks, and either uh, some will say, oh my gosh, we really have a little bit more time, and the other side will say, or we won.